This is a model of a sort of a science fiction shipping container. Um, it's one of several models that I've got on my Tatooine inspired diorama. Uh, the base of the model is just made from cardstock, cereal boxes, and, and real thick chipboard. Um, put it all together with super glue. Now the detail, detail pieces I'm going to use are made from cardstock, you know, cereal boxes, thick chipboard, and I used some leather dies to cut these out. Um, I take the dies and I have a cutting board, put the cardstock down, put the die on it, and I use my drill press with a block of wood to uh, cut out the die, cut out the shapes. Now this small piece of plastic uh, came from an old computer. It's part of a plug that holds the the wiring in, in it and uh, so I thought that would look good as like a lifting support for the shipping container. Now this is what I'm going to be using for the access door. It's actually the top off of a box of black pepper. My original idea was to cut this out and have it with the door open. Now here I'm taking different pieces and kind of laying them out on the model just to see what looks good. Um, try to make some sort of a pattern to it with all the different shapes of cutouts, most of them being square. Um, I have ended up with a, what I think was a good layout. Now I start gluing all these on and I'm just using white glue. Uh, the white glue works really well with the chipboard and the cardstock. Uh, it dries really fast. So I was able to move through this pretty quick without having to wait for glue to dry. Now some of these uh, white looking pieces of cardstock is just, it's just thinner cardstock. Um, cereal boxes, you know, snack boxes, pretty much anything that, you know, look, I keep, I keep all kind of junk. Now I didn't really measure any of this stuff. I just kind of laid it out by eye. I thought, you know, if it looks good, then it's close enough. Now the background music you're hearing, uh, I actually made that in a really old version of FL Studio. Uh, just something to, you know, just so you're not just sitting there staring at me, gluing stuff up and hearing nothing. I think it turned out pretty good for the top of it. Now on the sides, this here is some really thick uh, chipboard. Now, I was going to put this on these corners, and my first idea was to have just a row of them. But as you'll see in the video, uh, they wouldn't all fit. But I thought these would be like some heavy-duty pads for when this uh, container is, you know, locked into position it, to kind of help protect the container. So I ended up eventually taking the same piece, and I just put one in the center. And I ended up using this pattern on, on both sides. It was uh, really easy. And then the back side, it was just uh, some of these uh, rectangle pieces. I just put a row of those across the back of it. Now, when I built this model, you can see that the chipboard or the cereal box I used, I meant to have the printed side facing on the inside of the model, uh, but I got in a hurry. And it ended up being on the outside of the model, which no big deal. Once it's painted, you're not gonna see it anyway. Now, on, I started on the outside edges of this uh, just to make sure everything would fit. So I kind of looked at it and thought, well, if I push them all together, would that work? Nope, there's not enough room to, to fill it in. So I ended up just spacing them out kind of randomly, or not randomly, I sort of eyeballed it and uh, evenly spaced them, I guess you could say, but I didn't measure anything. Now back to the top, I added a few more details on the top of the model. Now for the lifting supports, um, I wanted to have a like a small square pad under each end of, of them to where it looks like it was you know, bolted down or welded down to the container. I didn't want to just glue it straight down on top of it. So I, I took the lifting support piece 
and marked out where I thought the pads would be. Put a little small drop of glue and then these pieces of cardstock that I cut out are perfectly square. So I just uh, lined them up even with the edges of that uh, support piece that I was going to use. Now when I went to glue the lifting supports on, I used some super glue. Um, the white glue just would not hold for that plastic, so a little bit of super glue. Been very careful when I lined that up. Tried to get them in the center of those small pads as best that I could. And I think these turned out looking pretty good. So now for the access door. Again, I was originally going to leave it with the door open. Um, but then I thought, you know, I have to cut the cardstock, make some sort of interior, and that wouldn't work because what this is going to do, it's actually going to cover up a, a wiring strip for the diorama. Uh, I've got a piece out of an old telephone that where I've got all the wires for the different lights wired into it as a kind of like a bus and this is going to cover that up but I wanted to have access to it in case a bulb burns out you know or something happens and I have to work on it I can just take this lifting or shipping container and just lift it off gain access to uh, all the wires now I ended up having to use a lot of super glue to get this plastic to glue on it's uh, I don't remember what type of plastic it was but even after sanding it I, I really had to put a lot of glue to it and hold it for a long period of time now it would look great with the door open. I mean, I thought, you know, that would look really good, but it ended up not working that way. So um, I ended up gluing the door shut. So here's here's the model all put together, glued up, and uh, just kind of looking around thinking, hey, you know, do I need to add anything else or does everything look okay? And uh, it turned out fine. Um, so I ended up putting a base coat um, on the whole model and then I had to put a couple of coats on the plastic piece for the door the access door um, but yeah just just a general base coat for the model uh, one to help kind of seal it so it's because uh, that cardstock will soak up a lot of paint I took an, a very old fan brush and some silver and just went over the edges to kind of give it a little bit of a chipped paint look. Um, now most of that doesn't show through in the end because of all the weathering, but uh, I heavily dry brushed it with that silver. Now you can't really tell it much in this, in this image here, but um, there's a lot of silver paint on this. So then I went over with a sort of a, a light gold brown color to give it just kind of dirty it up a little bit. Uh, went over the whole model with that same color. You can see it more on the top than anywhere else. And then I took some uh, I think it was brown oxide and watered it down a little bit to add like some mud spatter to the to the bottom of the model because uh, you know where something's sitting in one place for a long period of time that bottom edge starts to get darker from you know the weather and everything else splashing up on it and then I took that same color watered it down some more and covered the entire model with it uh, pretty wet just to give it some you know rust and grimy look get down in the recesses and the little corners um, and then I went back and you know wiped a lot of that off with a rag and then take a rag which happens to be an old sock uh, yeah I don't throw anything away so I think it turned out pretty good actually 
it's not too dirty dirty but it's dirty enough to look like it's been sitting around for a while and here's some photos of the finished model And then here is a photo of the model sitting on the diorama. And underneath that is that wiring bundle I was talking about. Here's a sneak peek of the diorama. So there's a lot more models to build for this. Um, it's gonna be more like a junkyard. So come back for more videos. Mm -hmm.